Good morning, and it's still good morning. Welcome again, and this is the third session, and I'm sure most of you are hungry, correct? Yeah. Very hungry? Yeah. All right, just give me, you know, less than an hour and I'll be done, and you'll be eating in no time. And eating is what we, you love doing, of course, yes? And cooking? Who likes cooking, show of hands? Oh, over here you don't like cooking? No? Okay. All right, so... My name is Jackie, and I teach here at William Blue, which I love immensely. And I teach um, students who are just a little bit older than you. In fact, those that graduated last year are now here um, studying. And this is a career that you could also consider. Who is interested in doing hospitality? Is that all? Just this little group here? Over there? Yes, very good. OK. Um, so. I, like yourselves, um, entered the industry about your age, and I've been in it for about 25 plus years, and I love it immensely. It is such a diverse, interesting, exciting industry that um, you can do almost anything in that you can work in hotels, you can work in clubs, you can work in a restaurant or a cafe on a ship, um, as in a cruise line. We don't have one out there today. We had one there the other day. Um, you can travel freely. And, and you can work in wine, you can work in food and beverage, um, and you can do so much, it's so diverse, and that's what I love about it. And I've actually dabbled in many of those areas, um, and you'll never get bored. And being the Gen Z generation, correct? Also known as, in America you're known as the digital teens. Have you heard of this term? Digital teens. You're a digital teen. Um, so, what does that mean? How, do, how, how would you kind of depict your generation? Different to the previous, yes? Very different, in fact. Um, now, I have a hunch that in the HSC, there's going to be a question, and this is just a hunch, on social media and industry trends. And that is really going to be the focus of what I'm going to discuss today, more so than anything. So you have access to the slides. I will not do death by PowerPoint. And we'll have a nice little discussion. What do you think? Yeah? OK, you're all hungry? Yeah? OK, so I'll make it as interesting as I can. So um, let's just talk about the industry and some of the characteristics associated with the industry. Um, it requires a, a lot of staff, correct? Yes? So all those things I mentioned, you need staff. Um, in Australia, we have such a small population, though. Um, it's very much more specialised. And so having a lot of staff, it's also 24-7, the industry itself. Okay, so it's a very um, operational industry, very hands-on as well. Um, and it can fluctuate in terms of business, in terms of seasonal um, variations. Anything else? Can anything else kind of, you know contribute to the fluctuation or increase within the industry? Any ideas? Certain events, perhaps, can impact, perhaps, yes? Natural disasters, which I call also black swan events. Um, so anything that's unpredictable that can occur and can impact on our industry can be fatal. Um, for example, a natural disaster such as a volcanic eruption a few years back in Iceland. Remember, we had a, a volcanic eruption and that actually, you know, impacted on um, transport, tourism, um, the economy. Lots of things get impacted there. So we have to be very mindful of the fact that anything can happen. Even the terrorism attack back in December last year, um, the city was in lockdown, okay? And it, it really impacted on business because it was so close to Christmas. So we have to be aware of those kind of, um, you know, considerations. The other thing I want to focus on too is... Oh, I'm getting echo here. Echo. All right, I'll shout, so I'm very good at that. Um, okay, so looking at our market, uh, and who's the big caterers? Who are our customers? And we have a variation of customers. Such as what? Keep talking? Okay. All right, we have a domestic market, and that is basically all of us who live here, okay? We travel, correct? We may travel interstate, we may travel here within the city and dine out. Who are my diners? Who are the regular diners that are always dining out? So just the teachers. Is that because we can afford to dine out? Okay. All right. Now, looking at that, um, I'm sure most of you would eat a lot of fast food, perhaps. Yes, because it's cheap, it's quick, it's easy. 
perhaps, yes. But you can also have healthy fast food. What do I mean by healthy fast food? Hmm? Subway is healthy? Who says Subway is healthy? Okay. Depends what you get, yes. Um, what about uh, the street um, food or food trucks that you're now seeing emerging around the place? Um, Asian food in particular I find very healthy, also depending on what you select, of course. Um, so, yeah, so we like to eat out. Um, and we look at social media as well, where you're also very powerful in, uh, you know, actually having an impact within the industry itself. So social media comments, um, Snapchat, in Instagram, um, what else is there? Facebook, goodness me, there's so much. Um, there's, there's also the reviews you can do on Eatability, Zomato, uh, Yelp. Um, does this sound familiar? Yes? Okay. So you're also powerful as a consumer in also um, deciding, you know, what, what works and what doesn't. Okay. What's popular, what isn't popular. And you can actually have, um, you know, a pull there in determining what, what, what are some of the trends and determining what they are. So some trends that we can also discuss now with our industry that's emerging. Um, and some of these trends can stay for a while. Some of them can be very quick and, you know, they, they won't have a long livelihood. So we have to remember that trends change, okay? So some common trends over here, let's see. I've got uh, Hijran. Where's Hijran? Hijran, I'd like to hear a trend from you out loud that you can see in hospitality or specifically food and beverage, any, anywhere for that matter. Can you name a trend? Do you need a little hand? Do you want to ask a friend? Ask a friend. A trend. Let's, let's help her out. Um, okay, so a trend. I've just said one, actually. Yes, the food trucks. Now, one that I'm familiar with is um, a food truck called um, Gnefe, which is an Arabic word, and I have an Arabic background. Is anyone familiar with this semolina milk pudding? Oh, yeah, who? Yeah, we've got a following over there. Oh, another following over there with the pistachio nuts on top. That is so popular, isn't it? And there's queues just waiting for, you know, this wonderful dessert um, that's flavoured with rose water. So, yeah, that, that is a trend. Food trucks are a trend. There's also standing restaurants. Have you heard of the concept of a standing restaurant? No, okay, but it's more popular in other countries like Japan where you walk into a restaurant and you're just standing. Okay, you don't sit down. Who would like to do that? Well, we have standing desks. That's a new trend that we have here on the campus. So people who prefer to stand rather than sit. Um, okay, have you found another trend? Any others? The pop-up restaurant, yes. Who's been to a pop-up restaurant? So they'll, they'll just magically appear Okay, there'll be a following and they'll move. So they're very transferable and mobile. There's also uh, the personal chef that you can have in your home. Who's heard of this concept? So instead of cooking at home, you can have your own chef. In fact, my, my sister last night was raving about one that she had last night, a, a Swedish chef that came to cook for her. Wow, Swedish food, very different. Um, so yes, you can have your own personal chef. Um, other trends, let's hear from Alexander. Where's Alexander? Yes, okay, so there's a um, emerging trend now with becoming more healthy, eating what, raw food, veganism, okay, paleo, et cetera, et cetera. So anyone who's a follower of any of those diets or trends with food, and what is your one? Oh, gluten-free. Okay, so you're celiac or? Okay, anyone else who has a dietary requirement? Dietary requirement people? No one over here, so you can eat anything and everything. Any vegetarians? Oh, there's, oh, Alexander, you're a vegetarian. Okay, Alexander, by choice. Anyone else? Yes, at the back there, hand up, loud voice. You can answer. Perhaps stand up. What did she say? Wait, yeah, we've said that one. Okay. Um, but all, organic, yes, I was hoping someone would say that. Biodynamic, organic, um, knowing where the source is of where your food is grown and how it's grown. Okay, so that's also very important. Um, not having as many um, herbicides, pesticides, chemicals 
and knowing where it's actually coming from, having free range as well, um, sustainable um, considerations, fair trade, that kind of thing. So that's also another trend. Okay, another trend from Eileen, or where is she, Eileen? Say that again. Oh yes, eating from jars. And if you've been to say Dank Street around there and those cafes there, that's also very popular. So eating or having a, a juice from a jar, yeah, that's very popular. Um, let's hear from, let's see, is it Amanda? Amanda, at the end. Yeah, so not having GM um, or genetically modified foods and having, again, um, natural, wholesome, untreated vegetables, say. Yes, okay. Or having gardens. How many of you have a garden with veggies? Okay, very popular now. And chooks, too. Who has chooks? Okay, yep. Oh, you've got chooks. Okay. Oh, you're a poultry breeder, so that's why you've got chooks, of course. What were you going to say? Yes, the superfoods. Now I'm a superfood um, fan. So superfoods, chia seeds, L LSA, blueberries, um, kale. Yes, kale. And you all eat kale, yeah? Who likes kale? Okay, kale. Anything else? Oh, quinoa. Yes, quinoa is popular. Other superfoods? Porridge is actually a superfood. Oats, very good for you. Um, and, of course, fresh fruit and vegetables, yes. They're superfoods, especially berries, okay. Antioxidants, full of antioxidants. Um, anyone else over here? Here, John, your group there. Can you contribute to a superfood idea, concept? Oh, chia, we said chia. Yeah, chia is very popular at the moment too. Okay, yeah, so superfood. Um, now, one I want to introduce you to is the uh, cafe slash concept. Now, when you go to a cafe these days, it's not just a cafe, is it? So you can have a hairdresser slash cafe. You can have a bakery slash cafe, a chocolate shop slash cafe. Um, there's one in Newtown where you can actually knit in the cafe. It's a knitting cafe. So those who like knitting, who are my knitters? Oh, very good, in Newtown. Um, all kinds of cafes. So florist, bike shop. There's many styles. So this is also another emerging trend, um, not just a cafe, but something else that's offering more than what a cafe does. Um, iPad ordering, so using technology to order your meals. Who's done that? Yes, that's becoming very common too. Um, also, um, food markets, growers markets, okay, uh, that are held regularly in certain locations. Um, yeah, there's so many trends. Sustainable cafes, single origin coffee, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, many of you would enjoy the reality TV shows such as um, My Kitchen Rules and MasterChef, correct? Do you think some of that has actually spurned on the interest in hospitality itself? Yes, yeah, so a few heads nodding here. It definitely has. In fact, so much so that many of you are choosing to actually cook at home. And there's been increases in sales with, at Woolies and Coles with butter and milk and eggs and so forth. So that's actually um, really been, you know, that's actually taken off in the last, say, five years or so. And that's become more popular than ever. So that's also very popular. Um, other things too, like, um, let's see, Not Quite Nigella. She, who's heard of Not Quite Nigella? Yes, okay, she has a big following. So this is um, also, again, social media reporting on the restaurants that she's reviewed. Now, you can also set up a blog page and do the same. Um, and many of you probably do um, take photos um, and send it to Instagram or Facebook. Who does that? Always going and taking photos. Yep, I do that all the time. So, hey, we're very involved in that way in hospitality itself more directly. So we have to be mindful of that fact, too, that... We are, um, we, we actually have an impact on the industry directly, don't we? It's very powerful what we can say and do, definitely. Okay, other industry characteristics that we have to be familiar with, um, our market, so I talked about really the domestic market, but we also have another market. What is the other market? 
International, yes. So um, international in terms of us traveling and also um, you know, being a consumer internationally and becoming familiar with hospitality overseas, but also people who travel here. And our biggest uh, market at the moment, does anyone know what country we're receiving many of our tourists from? No, it's actually China. Yes, you said China. Yes, China. So we're actually seeing a lot more Chinese tourists here than ever. Now, when I was your age, it was the Japanese. We had many Japanese traveling here, but now it's the Chinese. And, um, and they are spending big money. Okay, so it's actually an industry that's worth $81 billion to our economy. That is a lot of money. Okay, so um, if we consider some of the other things that contribute to our economy, um, what are the other biggest um, money earners? And it actually affects China. Mining, who said mining? Very good. So iron ore and coal. And thirdly, our next biggest market, any guesses? And, and it's in this very room. Education, wonderful, yes. So education is also worth a lot of money to our economy. Um, and this will continue to boom. So we have to be mindful of that too. Um, so at the moment, our Australian dollar is not doing as well. And it's also attractive for people to come here from overseas and, and have a holiday here. And the proximity to China is actually quite close. Um, so hence, we have many Chinese who are, who are traveling here. Um, and also, having said that, with our Australian dollar, some people are choosing not to travel overseas and will remain here and spend and contribute to the domestic market. So that's another trend. Um, other trends, too, and characteristics we have to be aware of. Um, looking at... Uh, hmm, let's see. Let's look at... Uh, Looking at customer service and the way in which service um, is carried out now in some of the places that we enjoy going to, has that changed? In terms of quality, there's a hint there. Our expectations, are they being met? You don't think so? You, you beg to differ here? Okay, anyone else? And why is that? Why don't you agree that it has improved or not improved? Okay, in your opinion, you think it's getting worse? Oh, because we don't have enough staff to cater for the service that we want to, that we require and demand. Perhaps, and that's to do with our population, of course, being a small population. And I would say, though, having been in the industry for so long, it has improved, yes, markedly. In fact, so much so that we have a lot more um, education available to you um, where you can come to a college like this and we will train you on how to provide good customer service and educate you on products and services and you know, looking at specific areas if you want to specialize in food and beverage or if you want to look at other um, departments um, in housekeeping or reception, sales and marketing, event management. Anyone interested in event management? That's another area that we specialize in too, event management. Um, so, and commercial cookery, of course. Who are my commercial cookery people? Who are the cooks? Oh, yes. Okay, that is actually a very popular program. Um, and, it, and it will continue always to be, I, I imagine. Okay, so they are some, they are some trends. Um, what I want to do now is also talk about um, departments within hospitality. And I'll just use a hotel environment as, a, as an example. And we'll look at some of the hotels that we have around here. Within this radius, we have about oh, more than 10 five-star hotels. Can anyone name a few? Yes. Okay, Shangri-La is one. The Hilton. Park Height, just over here behind us. Key West, yes, and it's also service departments. Well, it's mostly service departments. It's not really a hotel. Um, it's still a commercial environment. Okay, so you understand the um, term commercial versus non-commercial? Yes, okay. The, the Four Seasons, that's where I used to work. Anywhere else? The Intercontinental, very good. There's more, yes. The Marriott. There's one that's over there beyond. There's the Sheraton, but there's also the Langton. Have you heard of the Langton? Yes. Okay, any more? 
the Stanford. Okay, I think we've covered a lot of them. That's pretty good. I'm actually impressed. Um, who stayed in any of those hotels? Oh, okay, just a handful. Okay, so when we look at a hotel, let's break it down. It's very highly structured. It's very centralized. So we have our management level, okay? And stemming down from management, what kind of departments do we have? So we have F&B, food and beverage, yes. Operations. Human resources, who said that? Very good. Yes, human resources. That's actually a, a very big department um, where we have our recruitment. And what else do we have in human resources? Staff. Development, yes. Personal professional development. Recruitment, we have selection. We have performance management. And we have training and development, perhaps. Payroll can also fall in that department, or it also can fall into another department, payroll. What other? Yes, finance. That's another department. What else happens in finance? So we have accounts payable, receivable, um, managing budgets, setting budgets, forecasting. Um, anything else? Managing the revenue, investing the revenue. Yes, okay. Um, okay, so that's finance. We've said HR. There are more departments. Sales and marketing. I love that one. What else can fall within sales and marketing? Starts with P. Two words. Public relations, yes. So sales and marketing is actually a very important department. This is the department that actually brings in a lot of business. Okay, so sales and marketing is very important. Another department. as in within food and beverage? The kitchen itself. Okay, so the kitchen would fall under food and beverage. It's such a diverse department that you would have food and beverage, you would have room service, um, banqueting, yes, and any of the outlets that we also have there too would fall under food and beverage. So the restaurants, the bars, the cafes. Um, now, having worked at the Four Seasons, and I highly recommend that one as a, a great lo work location, it's one of my favourite work locations, um, that is also an international company. So you can travel with that company, stay in their hotels for US dollars a night. That is zero US dollars a night, as if you work there. Correct. Yes. No, Four Seasons do it. <laughs> so you can, that's one of the perks, all the benefits of working in a hotel like the Four Seasons. I believe other hotels like the Hilton do and the, and the uh, Park Hyatt and the Intercon Intercontinental also offer something similar. Um, the other thing that I enjoyed about working in the hotel is that I worked in many other departments. Having worked in food and beverage, I also worked in the health club and I also worked in guest relations, specialising in Japanese um, guest relations, so helping out the Japanese honeymooners and... Um, and all of that kind of stuff. So that was really interesting. Um, and you can do that too. So you can, you can actually move along departments, you can do an internship, you can explore, find out what you like. Housekeeping's another interesting department. Did anyone mention housekeeping yet? A very, yes, a very important department. There's more departments. What other departments are there? Yes, security is a department. So security of guests and staff, okay? So don't forget they're also there for us as staff. Um, yes, yeah, so security plays a big role. Another area, there's more. Maintenance, maintenance very good. Maintenance, yes. Um, so maintenance in terms of um, ensuring that everything works um, and any, anything that doesn't, well, we get, we, you know, we actually look at, look at that and getting it fixed as soon as we can um, and ensuring that it's also safe for us to work there too. Have I covered all the departments, do you think? Oh, gaming. If it is a gaming hotel, which is our gaming hotel in Sydney? Yes, okay, we have that one, and then we're going to have another one shortly at Barangaroo. Yes, another one. So, um, watch this space. Okay, so that's departments. Let, now let's look at um, teams, and teams are also important within those departments. And I have to say, within hospitality itself, you'll always, always work in a team. Do you agree? Yes, so you have to work in a team. And a team, the acronym team, do you know what it stands for? First word is together. Everyone achieves more. 
together, everyone achieves more. So we're, that's the, the concept of synergy and working together and ensuring that we do a good job and, and we work um, cohesively and positively. So it's important that um, as a staff member that you understand your team, understand the requirements of what you're meant to be doing. How do we know what we're meant to be doing? What, what guides us? So I've employed you now. You're going to work in housekeeping. How do you know what your duties are? Yes, but what can help you? Yes, induction and training can help, but I can also give you a job description that details all your responsibilities and what you're required to do and what, you're, what you have to be familiar with. Um, so this is also important in terms of understanding your role and fitting into the organisation. Now, when I started out many, many years ago, um, I started as a runner in a restaurant, a very well-known restaurant in Balmain where waiters used to wear gloves. And a runner, anyone know what a runner is? Any idea? They do run, kind of. <laughs> they are, yes, kind of like a gopher um, that delivers the food to the waiting stations from the kitchen. Okay, so they are the link between the kitchen and the dining room. Um, yeah, so that was my very, very first job, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was such fun. I thought, oh, let's, let's kind of do something else now. Let, let me become a, a food attendant. So then I did that. Um, and, you can, and you can actually specialise within that role too and also look at, you know, areas such as wine and becoming a sommelier. Do you know what a sommelier is? Fancy French word for what? A wine attendant, yes. So do I have anyone that's interested in wanting to do that in the future? No, in terms of beverages? No, no one's interested in the beverage type of career? Okay, well, that's also a possibility. You might be. Very good. Okay, excellent. Okay, that's great. So you can do your WSET, which I've done, yes. Um, that's another course you can do that specialises in wine. Um, so, yeah, so you have to also consider with these roles, you need to supplement it with education, and education is at the core. In fact, education is a central premise behind what we do, correct? We need the education, and a facility like this does provide that, and for those who want to specialise. Um, so when I actually started, I also studied... And I, I got my um, diploma in hospitality management. And, and, and that was wonderful. And then I studied Japanese and I wanted to speak a language. And then I went to live in Japan. Anyone want to have a career overseas? And live overseas, work overseas? Yes, a language might help you to do that. I've also lived in India, another really interesting country. Have a smattering of Hindi. Um, so yes, it's always great to travel. And if you work for a five-star hotel like the Hilton or the Four Seasons, it will also provide you that opportunity to travel and work with that company. Um, so yes, that's another one to look at too. So also travel and working on transport, um, trains, planes, sh um, cruise liners. That's also another good opportunity. I mean, it's so endless. If you think about what you can do, you can be a food stylist. Um, you can be a reviewer, you can teach the course itself, which I'm doing now, <laughs> and you can be a chef. Who wants to be a chef? Oh, there's a few chefs on this side mostly, just one on this side. Okay. All right. So yes, you can be a chef, but you can also specialize in patisserie or anything for that matter. So looking at what you like doing. Um, so we actually have quite a few students who have succeeded very well in that area and have set up their own businesses and... It's great reading about them, and I do read about them in some publications, and it's like, wow, I've taught that student. Um, so, yeah, so very interesting. Um, now, other things to consider within our industry. Let's have a look. I'll play with some slides now. Okay, so I covered all the departments. Oh, one we didn't mention is front office. Did we talk about front office? What do we find in front office? Yes, reception, of course. Um, so this is where you would go once you want to be checked in. But before you are checked in, there's another word. It starts with R, and you need to actually get in contact with them before you can check in. Reservations. So a reservation department would take your booking, whether you do it online or phone directly, um, or you can be a walk-in. Do you know what a walk-in is? You actually walk into the hotel. Very easy. That's an easy one. Okay, so a walk-in. Um, so think about some of those areas too, where we have reservations, we have reception. Anything else that falls under front office? I mentioned it earlier. 
Let's see if you're listening. Concierge, yes. And guest relations. Guest relations is another area. Um, the porters, yes. Commissionaire falls under that too. Okay, so another big department. Um, and we have the management department as well in terms of the general manager um, or uh, the finance manager would, could also be there. So the assistant general manager. Um, so management in terms of duty managers. There's also many managers as well. Okay, so management is another department in itself. Um, okay, let's have a look now at other areas. Um, leisure. Okay, so leisure, which is tied in with tourism, this is another trend that's emerging. And when we look at leisure, um, think of resorts. Okay, so who's travelled um, in the last few years to a resort, to an island, say? Is it the teachers just again? <laughs> okay, so you have? Where was that? Fiji. Okay, so Fiji's popular. Thailand. Numia, yes, or New Caledonia, yes. Fiji again, very popular. Another one. I haven't been to Fiji yet. Anyone else down there? Hirajan, where is she? <laughs> Have you travelled anywhere recently? Where? Seychelles? Maldives. Okay, Maldives, very good. Okay, so people travel to these locations um, for a real holiday, okay, in the sense that they want to just rest and... Um, have access to recreational facilities, okay? So when you travel to these islands, what are you doing? What kind of activities are you um, participating in? Oh, you're eating. Okay, eating. <laughs> Anyone else? Parasailing, snorkeling or scuba diving. Diving in with sharks, perhaps? Who's a bit more adventurous? Or spas? Oh, yes, of course. So, yes, we're looking also at spas, massages, um, having, you know, um, hot stone massages. Who's had a hot stone massage? Highly recommended. It's so nice. So you can do all of those treatments, um, facials, etc. Okay, so that is also another um, uh, area, too, that's very trendy at the moment. Um, and also it can tie in with meditation and yoga, um, alternative health care as well. Okay, so that's also very popular too. Um, having shiatsu or reiki massages, um, different styles, Swedish, of course, and, and then many more. Okay, now within our um, industry too, we don't just go out to eat and drink. What else do we do? Yes, we want to be entertained. So live performances, whether it's in a bar and you see a band. Who likes going out to see a band? Who likes you know, popular music here and likes to go and watch music being played or jazz or whatever it is that you like. What, what kind of music do you like? The teacher here, sorry. Anything. Okay, so live music, live entertainment, yes. Okay, so we want live entertainment, yes. And we will go out to cabarets or we'll go out dancing. Anyone still go out dancing? Yeah, it's our generation still. Okay, um, seeing, uh, seeing live cultural events um, or concerts, okay? So we also want to be entertained. And this is another area that we have to consider too for um, people who go out. So it's not just about eating and drinking. Now, back in the day when I used to work over at the Opera House in the Benelong restaurant for Gay Bilson, we had three sittings in that restaurant. And it was a type of restaurant that was actually physically hard to work in, in that you had to be very fit because we had so many levels and so many stairs. And to be a runner there, well, you wouldn't want to join a gym because that's the gym in itself. So you would have a sitting that's pre-theatre, then you'd have your normal formal dining sitting and then um, supper or after theatre. So we were very busy. Um, and we'd have some of the performers come as well afterwards. Um, and, and it was always busy. And it was very popular at that time. Um, so people were there to go to the Opera House, but they were also there to dine as well. Has anyone been to the Benelong restaurant there? Um, no? Some? Hmm? Okay. All right. So here we're talking about ultimate fine dining. And fine dining as opposed to um, fast food outlets or casual bistro style dining. How does it differ? Does anyone know about some of the differences that you would receive in a fine dining restaurant such as Key, which is over here. We have Key restaurant. There's also Tetsuya's. 
Um, we have Belong. We have aqua dining over the bridge. So how does that differ? What, what would you expect? A fast or a slow style service? Who said fast? <laughs> slow, definitely slow. Okay, um, you're there for a dining experience. Okay, so, and you're paying a lot of money for this. So somewhere like Tetsuya's, where I've been to recently, expect to pay about three hundred dollars per person, and that includes a degustation. Do you know what a degustation is? Fancy French word for what? Lots of courses, multiple courses, and you can expect to have at least 12 or so courses, okay? And you can be there, and I was there from 6 o'clock p.m. till what, guess what time I was there till? Midnight, yes, midnight, literally, mid midnight. So I was there for six hours eating, eating, I was actually 14 courses. I got the VIP treatment for some reason. So, <laughs> so if you're in the industry, you also, being a small industry, people know you, okay? And, and I actually knew the sommelier that works there, so that can help. So it's very, you know, well, small knit industry and you get to know lots of people. So Tetsuya's, um, yes, slow style service, many courses, very expensive. 25 staff in the kitchen, 25 staff on the floor. And I don't think I saw the same person twice. Food, no bigger than the palm of my hand. That is very labor intensive. Um, a work of art. In fact, the concept of tetsuya's is modelled on the Japanese kaiseki um, notion of um, eating within the season and eating with our eyes. Food's got to look good, okay? And it's very artistic, very creative. Does anyone like Japanese food? Okay, very popular too. Um, of course, sushi has been around for a while, but there's so many Japanese restaurants in Sydney that I see all the time, and it's also very popular. It's healthy. Okay, um, Okay. so going back to fine dining again, um, and we'll talk a little bit about this later. In fact, I'll probably emphasise it more in the next session when we talk about food and beverage. Um, we just have to be aware of some of the differences in the styles of service, okay, and I'll reiterate that later. Um, what I also want to look at too, let's have a look at some of the other areas that you need to cover. Oh yes, non-commercial and commercial environments in hospitality. Um, do you all know the difference between non-commercial and commercial? Yes? Okay, can you highlight some differences over here? Okay, so a hospital is a commercial or non-commercial? Okay, so not making a profit. Looking at places where they don't make a profit. Prisons. Have you ever thought about prisons? Well, they need to be fed there, don't they? So prisons is non-commercial. Hospital, non-commercial. Institutions tend to be non-commercial. Um, schools, perhaps, depending on the school, boarding schools maybe, can differ. Yes. Any other non-commercial entities? So think non-profit, think charitable, charities. Charities is another area. Nursing homes, mm, okay, they do make profits there. And in fact, that's gonna be booming in the next, say, 10 years. Do you know why that's gonna be? We have an aging population and a small aging, well, we have a small population which is aging. Um, so people of my generation in 20, 30 years time retiring and looking at that other life where we're not going to be working, um, yes, yeah, so that's going, to, that's going to boom in that there is a larger group of people who are retiring, and that's the baby boomers, so the generation ahead of me. Um, they, are, they are already retiring, okay, and that is a huge group of people, okay. So, yes, so we have to be aware of that one too. Let's talk about commercial. So commercial is, yes, yeah, so anywhere where we want to make a profit, Okay, so like I said, cafes, restaurants, um, hotels, we are aiming for a profit here. Okay, so we want to make money. So they're the two big differences but, um, in that we're making money and we are covering our costs if it's non-commercial. Um, at one time, I used to work for the governor of New South Wales, Marie Bashir, and we used to host a lot of events there for non-commercial entities and charitable organisations, which she was a patron of. So I'm familiar with many of those. Um, and really, we were just covering our costs. So we didn't actually make a profit uh, at all. So, you know, that, that's an area that I'm familiar with in terms of non-commercial. 
Okay, so let's see, how much time have we got for lunch? Oh, not too long now, are you still hungry? Getting hungrier? Yes, very good, okay. Um, now, I want to talk about other things too in terms of our industry. Um, so we spoke about the departments, um, and I want to talk about information sources now and look at specifically, and I, this is where I feel we have a hunch of a question being asked in your HSC, um, to do with social media. Okay, so the media um, and the range of sources in how you access information um, is very uh, important. So some of the things that you do um, in, in finding out what's going on, what do you, how do you access this information? So it's really via the internet mostly. Okay, there is another way as well, apart from the internet. And it delves more than just looking and, and hearing about things. What are you actually doing? Eating? Yes, who did? <laughs> well, okay. What about the, um, the experience of going out and, and seeing for yourself and trying things out? Okay, that, that is first-hand knowledge of, or first-hand experience of um, understanding the industry itself. And you can do it through travel or you can just do it in terms of um, eating out in places that you enjoy going to, okay? So, um, and I'm sure some of you have play, favorite places that you go to time and time again, yeah? Um, so think about some of those experiences that you also gain knowledge from. Yes, the media, of course. Um, Particularly online, yes, everything's mostly online for you in terms of access, accessing information. Um, there's also reference material, there's publications you can have access to. Um, does anyone have any Donna Hay magazines or, that they look at or are inspired by? Yes, okay. Again, our generation that are nodding there. Okay, so that's also information that we can also utilize. Um, being familiar with, with what's going on in industry in terms of legislation. And you just recently spoke to Jeannie and she highlighted some of the issues there with safety and RADIC with hygiene, okay? So legislation also being updated there and being familiar with what's required. And also, um, as I mentioned, we have the personal experience and observation and networking. Now networking, I wanna have a little, um, you know, I wanna emphasize this one in particular. Ways in which we network can vary. Um, so being up to date with industry, we have to be familiar with what's going on around us. And the way to do that is actually to network and being social. Okay, so what kind of events can you attend which enables you to be uh, a networker? And we're coming up, oh, we are in October. October is what month in Sydney? What did you say? Oktoberfest. <laughs> Good Food Month is now known as, it, or symbolic with October. Have you, are you familiar with Good Food Month? Yes? Okay. So um, here we're highlighting, um, you know, and featuring many of our uh, locations in terms of restaurants and venues where we're serving food and beverage, um, night noodle markets and so forth. So we are promoting food and beverage in Sydney in this month. Okay, so there's many events you can attend. Um, there's also um, conventions and fine food fairs. Has anyone been to any of those expos? Yeah. It's actually next Monday, isn't it? Oh, okay. Right, so who else attended that? Okay, so this is also um, a place that you can visit and actually meet the suppliers and vendors um, who are supplying the services and products um, available to you and also being, you know, networking with some of these suppliers is, is wonderful and getting familiar with who they are. Um, also wine industry events, I attend a lot of these, knowing what's going on with wine and what's happening to our industry there and how that's um, becoming innovative. So innovation is at the core. Okay, are you familiar with innovation and what we have to do in terms of maintaining trends and keeping up and improving? Um, so it's, it's a cycle of always continuous improvement and innovation is at the core of that. Okay, so we have to be very savvy there and network. Um, and also being up to date with technology trends and I'm sure all of you are, correct? Yes? Um, so much to say that it's virtually impossible to find anyone without an iPhone or a smartphone these days, correct? 
or anyone that says they don't have one here, I don't know, it's virtually impossible to survive without it, correct? Could you go a day without it? Probably not, inconceivable. Okay, so being up to date with trends there um, and industry trends and also being familiar with the customer experience. And again, as I reiterated before, education is at the core and knowledge is important about what we're providing, um, you know, what, what, what is the information we're, we're sending out to our customers? Um, is it congruent with what we're delivering? Um, is it authentic? Um, is it ethical? So ethics is also another consideration. Um, and how do we know about ethics too, where we work? What, what kind of guides us about ethic, ethics and how we should practice within our work environments? So someone earlier said induction and training. Okay, so when you're inducted into a workplace, there's gonna be something probably known as a code of contact, conduct that you're gonna be, become very familiar with. Um, what's acceptable, what isn't acceptable, behaviors that we endorse, behaviors that we don't endorse, okay? Um, and being in hospitality, we, it's all about being professional. Okay, it's all about knowing um, what to say and not what to say, being diplomatic. Um, and having that, that degree of professionalism practiced at all times. Why do you think that's important? Why do we need to do this? Let's see, who's on my hit list? Um, Alofa, Alofa, where are you? Oh, Alofa, over there, put your hand up. Yes, wave. Alofa, why do we need to be concerned about professionalism in our industry? For business? Continuity, reputation, very good. Yes, reputation is at the core here. So we need to ensure that we practice what we preach. Okay, we look the part as well um, and we deliver accordingly. Quality, quality service. What else apart from quality service? How do we know we're doing a good job in terms of the customer? Yes, and something else. More importantly, they return, very good. The customer returns. And think about the places that you return to time and time again. Why is that? Is it to do with the food or the service, the ambience? Um, nostalgia, when you were a kid, you went to this place. So kids are also important. Don't forget that kids are an important market. Why? They Yes, they are influential, but they grow up and they remember. So think about some of the times where you went when you were a kid. Do you still frequent some of those places now? Yes? Okay, very important. Which place is that? You nodded. It closed down. <laughs> okay, so that closed down. Um, not a good example. Um, anyone else who wants to share a, a nostalgic experience when they were a kid? Lee's for Tuna Court. Okay, it's a Chinese restaurant. Oh, you just promoted the Chinese restaurant. Very good. So you still go there now. Mm, okay. Location? Crow's Nest. Ah, oh, yes, I know it. That's called Matthews, isn't it? Peacock Gardens? Yes, I know it. Very, very popular. Um, so, and Crow's Nest, full of restaurants. In fact, just when you walk down the street in Willoughby Road, Crow's Nest, there's just restaurants and cafes everywhere, correct? Everywhere. Um, and having said that, when we look at Sydney, you can actually divide it up into areas being, for example, if you want to go and eat Indian, where would you go for Indian? Yes, and Harris Park, very good Indian. Where would you go for Vietnamese? Well, think where the Vietnamese live, in Cannibale, Cabramatta, perfect. Uh, and it's great, I love going there. I cycle there all the time and I love eating pho. Do you know about pho? P-H-O, where are my Vietnamese friends? How do you say it? Pho. <laughs> And put a GA at the end, and that's chicken, correct? Fuga, fuga, that's it. Okay, and if I want to have um, my Lebanese food. Oh, look, we can differ here, we can argue. Uh, Bankstown, you say? Campsy? Where else? Green Acre Punch Bowl, okay. Where? Gilbert, in fact, I had really good Lebanese the other night at North Sydney. Who would have thought North Sydney would have really good Lebanese? Yeah. Okay. Now, Italian. Where would you go for Italian? Haberfield, Leichhardt, Five Dock. Very good. So we understand that you can actually divide Sydney up um, in terms of its ethnicity. 
And it is very much like that, isn't it? And if you do see an Italian in an Italian restaurant, I guarantee that's going to be really good Italian food. Okay? So, very, yeah, so it kind of gives you an indication that if they, they think it's good, then it must be good. Or any, anywhere where there's a queue, for that matter. So, restaurants with queues, what is, that, what is that symbolic of? If there's a queue outside a restaurant, what does it mean? It's got to be good. It's got to be good. Um, and there's a few of those. In fact, Burke Street Bakery, who knows that place? It's at Surrey Hills. There's a queue all the time, isn't there? Uh, there's always a queue. Um, and other places, um, who can also name another place where you have to wait in a queue to get in? Which bakery? The, the Nafe Bakery? Say it again. Where is it? I can't hear her. Anyway. A, okay, so a bakery. Yes. Oh, Eljana. I love Eljana. Yes, I love Eljana. Who likes El Jana? Yeah, I've got a few El Jana followers. Yes, that's another popular place. So that's, that always has a queue. Um, it is, it's also good value for money. I look, many of this pe these places that you go to where there are queues, there's got to be a reason why people are queuing. Often it's really good food, but it's also very good value for money too. Okay, so um, the customer experience. Knowledge is key, very important. And also um, being empowered as an employee can lead to greater development for you as well. So, um, in wrapping up, I do seriously hope that many of you who love hospitality, and that's all of you in this room, correct, will consider a career in hospitality. Um, it is such a wonderful industry to be in. I truly, truly love it and have never considered any other industry. That's how good it is. Um, it's one that you can actually change with times and, you know, you can actually you know, look at other areas that may interest you if you suddenly get bored in what you're doing. That's how diverse it is and very transferable in terms of your skills. Um, and for those that want to study commercial cookery, hey, we always need chefs. That, that area will always be around. Um, definitely uh, chefs are in demand. Um, okay, so do I have any questions from anyone? Just general questions about what we've discussed or anything you want me to clarify or... Are you all just really hungry and you want to go and eat? Okay. Do, how much time do we have left? Okay. Gerard, um, if a question asks for the influence of technology on the hospitality industry, do we speak generally about general improvements such as things as pay wave or do we mention social media influence? I would probably take um, the approach where you could use both. Okay, um, because both are relevant, and I would actually use examples of where technology is depicted within the industry. So I would highlight that, and also how social media impacts the industry, and how powerful social media is as a tool, and a marketing tool, um, not just for technology. So I would actually do that too. In fact, when answering questions, I would also supplement my answer with an actual example because that tells me you understand what the question is asking. Um, so that's also an, another way of um, improving your response to the question. Yes. Any questions here from the audience here? Um, now, if you do answer... Um, any questions that I'm going to ask, you're, 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 you're going to receive a prize. These funny, funny nerdy glasses. Nerdy glasses. Anyone? Okay. All right. Um, let's see. What kind of questions can I ask? Oh, in terms of overbooking? Um, the impact of the Privacy Act? Okay. All right. So, with the ethics of you mean customers being um, okay for hotels, in terms of hotels, in terms of hotels overbooking, what's the ethics about that? Okay. So, often hotels can overbook. Okay, and it can mean that they want to, you know, ensure that people who do cancel, well, they'll have people that can also fulfill those uh, seats or rooms, whatever it is that they're, you know, booking in terms of a restaurant or a room, okay, for accommodation. Um, but I, I suppose, too, that 
um, if they do overbook, there's also a policy where they have to ensure that guest has to be walked to another hotel within that proximity of that hotel or that area where it's located. So they often do that um, in terms of peak season. I, I'm familiar with that because um, that used to happen to us sometimes if we're overbooked or another hotel is overbooked. So they could have a relationship there that they'll, or you know, an agreement where they'll allow that to happen, and also for the same rack rate per se. Um, is there anyone else that wants to reiterate? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how about I do a, a quick. Um, Q&A and you can receive a prize. Okay, let's see. I've got a few questions up my sleeve. Um, an example of a non-commercial hospitality organisation. Yes, Alexander. A hospital, very good. Can you pass that down to Alexander? Excellent, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, a department um, in a hotel that uh, is front of house. Yes, front office, very easy. Okay, thank you. A department that is back of house. Housekeeping? Yes, housekeeping can also be front of house, but predominantly it's back of house, so you can take that. Okay, um, let's see. Um, a special diet consideration for someone that's celiac, also known as? Very good, gluten free. Okay. Um, huh, an example of a food truck we've talked about. Ah, very good. Can you pass that one down to the very back row? All right, another one. I've got three left. Three left. Um, one of the places that I used to work at. Who said that? Oh, you did. I heard it. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the courses that we offer at this college. Uh, uh, yes, very good. Take that one. And a tricky question. Should I do a quick tricky question? Who are my commercial cookery people? What is sous vide? Sous vide. What were you going to say? Okay, you put your hand up. I looked at you. There we go. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. I'll see you again shortly. Bye-bye. <laughs>